I greet you, beloved family. I reach out from my heart to yours. I reach out to embrace each one of you for the person that you are, and then each one of you that is a part of this community that comes together every time we have one of these meditations. This is a time that you may nurture yourself. This is a time where you can clear out your energies. This is a time for you to be present as who you are. We have spoken many times in the past about each one of you in the life that you're living, about each one of you as your soul essence and your higher self. We have spoken about your ego, which we frequently like to call your personality. We have spoken about the blending and the merging of your soul essence within your ego. As you are here, still present in your everyday reality, tune within yourself and consider your reaction to something that may be going on. As you breathe in and think about whatever that may be, ask a couple of questions. Do you feel it within your heart? Do you sense it or know it in your thoughts? Does it feel as if it's coming from outside of you? Or does it perhaps feel like it's coming up from within? These are some questions that you may ask yourself as you begin to discern what is my soul versus what is my ego. Your ego is an important part of you in this lifetime because that is the culmination of your experiences, your mental body, emotional, physical, and spiritual. It all comes together and gets reflected out as your personality or your ego, whichever phrase works better for you. I frequently prefer your personality because that is so much more inclusive and people will sometimes have a preconceived notion that their ego is limited or not as supportive of them, which could be very true. So if you consider all of this and that which makes you the person that you are in this lifetime, just feel the energies as they're going in and around you in this now moment. I always like for you to have this experience while you're here present in your everyday reality. And then we will tap into it again from the perspective of the all that is, which can sometimes give you a different reality. Create that ball of energy or light from within your heart. You can imagine it within your heart or you can take it outside of you. As you connect to this energy that is coming from your heart center, that is one of the ways that you are bridging from your spiritual into the physical. Feel what that is within and around you. As you allow for that to be created, you send a stream of light that goes down through your solar plexus, your sacral center, your root center, and it goes all the way down into the earth. You feel your energies as you link to Gaia. You allow that to then come back up through you. You send it up through your throat, your third eye, your head center, your light body center, and send it all the way up until you link with your higher self. As you look around this space, most often it's as if you are standing in this big open area and there are multiple things in and around you. These tend to be something you may be processing in your life. They may be ideals. Sometimes they are potentials that your soul is putting or making available to you and you may access it here within this space. Take a moment to take a deep breath in and just clear it out. Clear out this space so that you may instead see that which is truly important for you. It's always beneficial to periodically clear this out so that you can only have that which is in your highest and best interest available to you. From here, you follow that breath of energy and light. It moves from your higher self. It streams up until it ends within the soul plane. As you get to the end of that thread or that cord that links you to your soul, you may find yourself immediately merging with this essence. For some, as soon as you merge, it's like you expand even bigger. For others, it's as if you see yourself and you step into yourself. It is always unique or whatever your experience is, is your reality. But take a moment and just truly feel this connection because over the next several years, many, many changes will be coming down to you through this connection with your soul. I, the goddess, walk in and amongst each one of you as I reach out to embrace you. Within this space, we move into the all that is. Feel what the all that is, is for you. This is a beautiful, expansive frequency, dimension, level of consciousness, 
or whatever name to identify it works for you. It is wide open. It is a place where you can feel the crystalline energies as they flow within your consciousness, allowing you to feel anchored within that light. You are already making significant changes, not only in your life, but in your perception as you look out within this space and your everyday living. If sometimes you might feel anxious or you might feel as if you are questioning, by coming into the all that is, let yourself feel the peace, the relief, the balance of knowing that you are fully nurtured and supported. Do you remember when you had a sacred place that you would go in your meditations or prayers? For some, it was the beach. Others, the woods, the water, the clouds. Think about that place as it was. Perhaps it's in the past or perhaps it's current. But think about that place and it will manifest in front of you. Here within the all that is. For many of you, that place that you used to go was a different frequency than this one. So it might look different as you shift your vibration and perception up into this higher frequency. I invite you to consider, be it what has been the past or current, but consider what your sacred space would look like. That's a great question. I heard someone say, well, what is a sacred space? A sacred place is for you to feel secure for you to feel as if you can just let your mind expand or your consciousness expand, and where you can create anything that you would like to create. For many in the past, it was a place of safety as you learned how to meditate or pray. However, now there's so much that is intrinsic within you, your sacred place now becomes a place to push the boundaries a little bit, to move even further into the light and the frequency of potential. I have spoken for several of these meditations about your communication with your divinity, through your intuition, through linking with your higher self, through integrating in the all that is, and many other ways to expand your consciousness. So consider once more something that is happening in your life at this time that you are indecisive about, trying to figure out which direction you need to go or what decision you need to make. As you consider it here within the all that is, ask, what is in my best interest to know at this time? Many of you will feel a shift in your energy. Some may hear something, some may know something, and for others it may be exactly the same as it was. However, you put forth the intention that over a short period of time you will receive this answer. Especially when you are in this higher vibration, it is easier to discern that that information is coming to you from your divinity because it's right here. So let's consider your everyday life. Perhaps you've asked to manifest something in your life. Perhaps a job, a relationship, a place to live, or children. It's limitless what people are asking for. And then, as you consider your life, what clues have you received? Meaning, did anything happen that gave you insight? Did you see something when you were driving? Did someone call you that you had not spoken to recently? Did you feel nudged to try something different or look in a new place? These are most often your intuitive insights. The next question is, did you listen to these insights? Did you do anything about it? Or did you sit back to wait for perhaps a more divisive response? When I spoke of your ego or personality versus your spirit or your soul, Frequently, if you find yourself receiving insights or getting thoughts or perhaps I should try this, perhaps I should go over there, perhaps I can try up here. If there are different ideas that are coming through your consciousness and then one after another, there's a reason why you don't do them that is frequently coming from your ego or your personality. Are you perhaps saying to yourself, oh, it's in my best interest to be cautious. It's in my best interest to take my time. If it's really from source, I'll get another message. If you talk yourself out of situations in your everyday life, consider that perhaps that is your ego. So, going back to that same situation, while you are here in the all that is, look at the potentials if you had said yes instead of no to things that are going on in your life. As you look around, you really wanted that new job. And then if something comes up, but oh, that's not what I thought. That's not what I want. I want this. 
so you talk yourself out of it. Many times, as your soul is bringing you opportunities, it is nudging you outside of your comfort zone so that you as your soul can grow. You I let that energy move through every one of you. Your personality or your ego only knows this lifetime. It, therefore, likes to stay inside the box or stay inside of what it knows. It does not like to step into the unknown. Breathe in and breathe out. Look around. What I notice as I observe you is that as you are opening that doorway to your divinity, you actually have more opportunities that are coming to you. As this happens, it's important to also connect with your ego and expand your ego so that it may become accustomed to something new. Many of you have a strong personality. Many of you think this strength is what gets me where I am and where I'm going. At any given point, ask yourself, is this my soul or is this my ego? Every time that it's coming from your soul, you will immediately get a yes or no or a confirmation. If it's coming from your ego, you may get a blank as a no answer. You may get a yes, but it may try to convince you that this is the better way to go. And that's not all bad. When you have that debate within your consciousness, if I take this route or if I take this route, it frequently is a way for you to come to a decision. However, if you find yourself split 50 to 50, then ask, what does my soul want me to do? What does my divinity want me to do? And as you ask that question, then I invite you to follow your soul or your divinity. Indeed, I just heard a number of you say, or maybe do nothing. It is always your free will, whatever you choose to do or not do. So let us clear out this space. Let us once again step into the flow of y'all that is, feeling all of your potentials around you, feeling the love, your spiritual essence, and look at your life. For some, you may have a new perception. For others, it may be equal to what it was before. I simply invite you to move into a place of discernment that allows you greater understanding. For so much of humanity, fear, anxiety, insecurity can create many problems within your life. So now, at this time, choose to follow your soul. Choose to follow the divine. Choose to know that you are ever present with your own divinity. As I was expressing that, I could feel so many of you stepping into a greater confidence. As the whole planet is moving into something that is completely new and different. Some of the collective consciousness has that fear of the unknown, fear of making changes. So when you are here in this space of the all that is, become the confident person that you are. Feel the presence of your divine. Let it just be you. I will also say that the less of the third dimensional influence upon you, the less that feeds your ego with false energies or false potentials or inflated emptiness. So consider that when you get to that place of clearing out your energies, bringing in your divine, and then merging it with your ego, I see such merging and blending in each one of you that it is as if there is this expanding energy, energy filled with light, with love, with compassion, with this new energy filled with new awareness. Yes, not only is this you integrating more of your divinity, this is you connecting with and communicating with others, with everyone in the space of their divinity. Take a deep breath in and breathe out. I invite all of you to come together as a group. As you do so, Put forth that expression of yourself as the divine. And then as that hologram of the earth comes up within the group, you send this energy into the hologram. You may see it spinning, turning, transitioning. As it does so, it may even expand further as it is taking on all this higher frequency. There is always that peace that goes out to the universe. The remainder comes down onto the earth plane. As it moves through the collective consciousness, it is clearing out automatically anything that no longer is in alignment with this higher frequency. It moves down into the center of the earth, anchoring with the crystals and within this energy. It then moves back up, coming up through the surface again clearing out the energy that may be old and stuck in your personality or for all of humanity in their personality. 
You may pull your own essence up through that anchor that you have with Gaia. As it comes up, it is going to anchor in your heart center once more. It is also going out to the rest of humanity for whomever is open to receive. You then bring the remainder of your consciousness. It comes down from the all that is, through your soul essence, through your higher self, and it streams back down in and around you. You feel how it all blends around your heart center. Take a moment as this is blending and ask for a deeper integration between your soul consciousness and your ego or your personality. Then as if it is going in and out, up and down, and in every direction around you are integrating into you through your physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual bodies so all may be in balance. It is clearing out any lower frequencies that no longer serve you which in turn allows you to vibrate and live your life as the divine. Take a deep breath in and breathe out. This evening we spoke about that connection or communication from your soul and that communication that you have from your everyday personality or your ego. For many, many people the perception is that these are one and the same. However, they are two distinctly different aspects of each one of you. It is important to understand for you where are you receiving communication. We never say that you should not listen to your ego or your personality because that has a lot of everyday ins and outs that are helpful to you. But you absolutely must have that open flow of information that comes to you from your divinity because that is what is truly working in your highest and best interest. So beloved, seek balance, seek an open flow, and know that in everything I am always with you.